My talk consists of three parts. The first part is a brief introduction of the new generation scheduler. And the second part is adaptive parallelism, which aims to handle the problem caused by the factors in, is, which is increasing uh, the job, such as the data size mismatch and, uh, and the, the data screw. And the third part is a specular execution, which aims to optimize the performance degradation due to some environment factors, such as uh, hardware, ha hardware errors or the uh, accident, IOBZ, or CPU burst. Okay, in Flink 1.9, the new generation schedule emerged, which is more powerful and flexible. Uh, based on this schedule, uh, people could uh, they implement various strategies to implement their, their features, such as scheduling strategy, failover strategies, or partition release strategies. And based on this new schedule, we also could implement adaptive parent strategy and a speculative execution strategy. Okay, in the distributed computer platform, the parent is vital for both resource efficiency and performance. However, in the Flink, the parent is, is a pre-specified parameter, which is an empirical value. And sometimes it is, it is not uh, very optimal on various amount of data. And what's more, in the production clusters, it is even harder to scale, to, scale well to the, to the various import data size. To uh, overcome this problem, we introduce uh, this adaptive parents, which adaptively determine the, uh, the job parenting and the runtime based on the actual import data size collected from the IO matrix. That means for the large import data size, we increase the parenting, and for the small import data size, we decrease the parenting. Let's first see a simple example for consider of two vertices. The vertex one, can, oh sorry, the vertex one consists of three subtasks, and the vertex two consists of two subtasks. Thus, each subtask of vertex one will produce the, the two subpartitions. Of different, the partition is diluted in different colors. For the red the partition for subtask one, and the, the blue partition for the subtask two. And when the input data is extremely large, we will decrease the we will increase the parallelism of the vertex two to four, which means each partition will be processed by two subtasks. However, this partition split is of high cost since the partition have already split to the disks. It involves in order to reread the, the data into a memory, desynchronize the record, and, re, and redistribute the records. To overcome this problem, we, uh, when the job is planned, we create as many partitions as max parallel, which means only the parallel decrease happens. OK, uh, see another example. The vertex one consists of three subtasks, and the vertex two consists of four subtasks. Uh, since the shuffle painting between the vertices are all to all shuffle painting, each subtask of vertex one will produce is four partitions. And uh, since the, the import data size is extremely small, we, we decrease the parent to two. Thus, each subtask will produce is two partitions. That is, the subtask one of vertex two will produce the red partition and the blue partition. And the, the the second sub part, uh, subtask will, put, will process uh, the green and the purple partition. And uh, the last uh, two subtasks are canceled. There is another shape of painting between the vertices, which is uh, pointwise. And uh, to be simpler, we only draw the, 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 the parents of all the two vertices are all the same. That is, each subtask of vertex one will produce one partition for each subtask of vertex two. And uh, when the, the parent name decreases, also the first subtask sub will process uh, 
the red and the blue partition. And the second subtask will, pro pro will process the green and the purple partition. And the last two subtasks are canceled. Okay, since the previous PPTs shows how how the how the parametric series effects on the input data, and in some cases the vertex two may also have the output edge. For example, the vertex two has an output the vertex or vertex three. Since the parametric series to two and the last two two subtasks are cancelled. Each of each subtask of vertex three will only read the partition from the, the first the, the two subtasks. And uh, for the re and for the point wise surface pattern, the example is is a little more complicated. Since the um, the last two subtasks of vertex two is cancelled. And uh, the, in the previous uh, paintings, uh, the last uh, two subtasks of vertex three only read the data from, from the canceled subtasks. Since they are canceled, they have nothing to process. So the last, last two subtasks of vertex three should also be canceled. And uh, since the previous uh, PPT uh, shows the uh, output vertex has only one input edge. A more complicated uh, uh, example is if the downstream vertex has the, the multiple edges. For example, it has point ones and point and point ones shuffle painting. Uh, when the the parent of vertex one drops to two, the the parent of vertex three also decreased. And uh, and in the job execution, we must uh, we must uh, follow the rules that uh, the partitions of the same kind should be processed by the the same subtask. Thus, since the red and blue partition is produced by the first subtitian, the partition from vertex two sh should also be processed by the first, and the second will possess the last two partition. Okay, another example is the shuffle painting is both point ones and all to all. The same rule should also so also be followed. That is, the first subtask process the two partitions of different colors, and the second subtask process another two partitions of different colors. Okay, here is uh, how the damp parameter works in the workflow. Before the vertex scheduler, the, the job master could collect uh, enough data sets from the our matrix. So the job master will, will adjust uh, the parameters to the suitable value and uh, map the partitions to the, the, to the decrease the subtasks. For the mapping algorithm, that we choose the range partition rather than road robin. The reason behind this is that uh, uh, in some user cases, such as the sort, uh, the keys between the partitions are ordered. So when the, when the subtask process multi partitions, it, uh, it, should, it should process the successive partitions to, to make the keys are in order. Okay, here is, uh, here is a simple example to show how the damp parent works. First, uh, we run the simple map reduce job. The map reduce consists of, of three vertices, map reduce and data sync. And uh, the parent is, is planned to 30. So each, each vertex has 30 parent names. And the whole job execution time is more than eight seconds. But we can notice that the, reg, the input data size for the, for the reduce and the data sync are very small. And uh, when we use a damp parallelism, due to the small size input data size, the reduced vertex parallelism is reduced to one. And uh, since the uh, shuffle pattern between the reduced and the data sync is, uh, is point wise, the parallelism also decreased to one. 
and uh, the whole ex job execution time is no more than three seconds, which is much, much faster without the adaptive parallelism. Okay, since the, the adaptive parallelism aims to resolve the problem caused by the intrinsic factors, we now we introduce a special execution. And uh, in the large disputed the, the cast, uh, clusters, the hardware problems such as accident I/O busy or high or high CPU node can also cause the running subtask to be non tail For example, in this example, the the job consists of two what is this? The first of three subtasks and the second is two two subtasks. We can see from the picture that uh, the subtask one of vertex two is extremely longer than the second subtask, so the job, the whole job execution time is pronounced by this non-tail task. Uh, since, since the problem is caused by the accident factors, such as the system uh, hardware errors, the direct sort of to solve this problem is to run a copy of the subtask on another machine. So in this example, when the job master finds the the first subtask is a non-tail task. It will run uh, one prime subtask on another machine. And uh, when the, whatever the first or the copy execution terminates, the output uh, are used. OK, here is the uh, workflow of a specular execution. In the whole execution life cycle of, of the task, the task execution, executor will collect and report running statics to the job master period by heartbeat payload. And the job master will decide which subtask is a non-task and to do the corresponding operations, such as schedule the speculative execution attempt on a new machine. And uh, when, the, uh, when the speculative uh, attempt is scheduled, the first uh, finished one of the output, but that is uh, committed. OK, uh, the most important uh, problem of this of spec execution is how to detect the non-tail non subtask. We use this equation to dis define the uh, processing throughput. And in this equation, di is, uh, is all the input data size of current attempt. And the S is the average throughput of terminated subtasks in the same vertex. And the uh, CI is uh, currently already processed uh, data size. And the SI is the current, uh, the average processor speed of this attempt. Thus, we could uh, conclude that uh, DI divide, divided by S is, is the expected copy execution attempt uh, running time. And uh, di minus ci divided by si is the remaining time of this uh, temper. So if the si meet this equation, we call this task is a non-tail task. And uh, also, this is a simple example of map reduce job. It also consists of map reduce and dead sync. We can see that the first uh, subtask or reduce task. Uh, run a long time, nearly 10 seconds, which is much longer than the second sub. Thus, this is a non-tail task. If without specular execution, the whole job will run more than 10 seconds. And with, with the specular execution, when the job master detects the first subtask is a non-tail, it will run another the copy execution attempt on another machine. And uh, it runs very quickly take no more than one second. That's the whole job, job execution time is uh, no more than three seconds. OK, next to a simple conclusion. To make the Flink more powerful and efficient, we use a depth parallel to resolve the interesting factors, and we use specular execution to resolve the environment factors. OK, that's all my talk. Thank you all.
Thanks a lot, Bo, for the great talk. Are there any questions? Uh, I have a qu hi, I have a question around uh, how do you clean up the partial like long tail tests, like the data being outputted as a result of that? Uh, do you mean the long tail task change? Right, so you're you're running your long tail, yeah, the long tail test is still running, right? And then you have a copy of the other. Uh, yes, the copy um, may also be the be the long tail task. Right? Do you mean that? No, I, I actually mean that um, basically you have some partial output that has already been oh, generated yes, yes. because you, of your... Oh, yes, yes. You don't mean how to, how to possess uh, the output between the original one and the, the exactly. copy one. Yes. Uh, and we, we said that when the, um, when the copy one is run, they are output to a different file. Okay. And uh, when, when, the, uh, when the one which you finish first, we will take the output of the first one and the committed the output data. Okay. But... I mean, I'm, I'm assuming at the end of that output of like going outside of your uh, your task is some sort of data sync, right? So like, um, wouldn't the data sync have partially, already partially processed the long, the the results from the long tail task? Ah uh, yes, for uh, for the data sync task, the the out um, when when the spec execution is uh, on the output. Uh, file name of the, the dead thing is not uh, the name configured in the, in the job. It is a temp, is a temp name such as uh, with uh, dot one, dot, dot two. It. And when the vertex finish, we will rename the, the temp file name to the real name. More questions? Uh, how you handle data skew? Uh, I mean, like, if you have some partition that you, you, you're doing some key operation and most of the data are located in single partition because they belong to the same key, so you cannot easily split it. Mm, yes. Uh, the data screw consists of two types. The first type is the, the one partition is, is, is extremely large and the some partitions are extremely small. In this case, uh, we will use one subtaxe to possess all the small sized partitions, and the large partition will be possessed by one. This is the first step. If we found that uh, even by doing this, if the large partition is e even much larger, e e is uh, much larger than ex expected, uh, the partition split is avoided. And uh, um, there is one extreme occasion that if the partition contains only one key and the uh, current occasion, that, that will not be handled very well. All right, someone else? If not, then let's thank the speaker uh, for this great talk. And yeah. Okay, thank you.